Mark Crandall here of Purpose Chasers Podcast, a podcast designed to provide insights to empower individuals to break free from mediocrity and live extraordinarily. I'm so happy that you're tuning in and I hope you find great value in this podcast for you and those to come. Enjoy. What's up, everyone? This is Mark Crandall with the Purpose Chasers podcast, and I'm, at per usual, super excited. I have a, uh, a special guest, or maybe not a special guest, maybe just a really good friend of mine, uh, Jonas Perrin, aka DJ Nefarious. And for those of you who like my intro and outro on this podcast, this is the man behind it. And I asked Jonas, or I guess I'll refer to him as DJ Nefarious for brand recognition to come on the podcast solely based, well, not solely, but I think a a lot of the reason why I asked him to come on the podcast is he's one of the hardest working individuals that I know. And, you know, obviously I've been friends with him for, I don't know how long now, seven years. Yeah. Yeah. About seven years. Like that. And I watched him go from, you know, being a, I guess like a major league DJ in New Hampshire, which, you know, it's New Hampshire. (laughs) Right. um, To moving to New York to like really pursue his life quest of being a, like a real deal DJ Mm -hmm. and just watching the progression of, of what he's done since being in New York and to see the actions that he's taken to get to where he is now. It's just, it's inspired somebody like me who I consider myself one of the hardest working individuals that I know. And this man will be sending me text messages and emails at two, three in the morning. Cause he's out like promoting something or doing, he's, he's hustling, <laughs> he's hustling. Something. The hours are wild. Um, so Jonas, why don't you give, give a intro and uh, let everyone know what, what you're, what you're about, what you're doing, what, uh, what you want them to know. About you. Yeah. All right, Mike. Well, first off, I just want to say hey to everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in to Mark's podcast. And, um, you know, I'm really excited to be here. And I want to thank you for having me be on here. It's an honor. Um, and it's just really cool to do this. Like you said, like we've been friends for a while. So we're both people that are go- really going at it. And now we get to collaborate on stuff like this. So it's, it's an honor to be here. And thank you. Um, I mean, what I'm about it's crazy. I'm about so many different things, but really it's, it's about the journey for me. I love the hustle. Um, I get, I get really obsessed with the hustle and I love where it takes me. Um, you know, hip hop is a life for me. I, I couldn't see life without it. Um, I'm grateful to live in the era that it's so big. Um, and I'm just about to see how far I can really go. Um, I want to take this until I'm at a point where I'm like, wow, I didn't think I could ever be here. And then I want to do that again and again and again and again. Um, but right now, like where I'm at in a place in life is it's the grind. Like he said, I'll be texting him at two, three in the morning. I got home at six last night. Um, and it's, it's kind of the lifestyle and it's a beautiful thing. And like being in a new city, is incredible. Um, being out in New Hampshire, I definitely feel like I did my thing out there. I made a lot of connections. I learned a lot. I taught myself a lot. And I feel a lot of it was really preparation to get to where I'm at now. Um, so I could come to New York City, you know, already knowing how to make beats, knowing how to engineer, knowing how to do a lot of these different things that were really important in the business. Um, and put out a couple projects, know how that process works. And now I'm in a, in a place and like a mindset of like being humble and like taking in a lot of information and learning all over again. And just like accepting that and just being a, being present for the experience. Um, when it just, that's really where I'm at right now. Yeah, so you said something that I want to touch on that I think it's a bad uh, bad rap because a lot of people don't really understand what it means. 
So when you said you just really enjoy, you, you're really in it for the journey, you really love the hustle. I know what that means, but I don't think a lot of people, a lot of people out there know. I think like the word hustle just brings this kind of antagonism up with it. Like a lot of people don't understand what, what we're saying. I know what you're saying because I right. don't but yeah, can, exactly. Can you describe that for, for people out there who might not understand what the hustle is? Yeah, so like, I mean, when I'm talking about the hustle, I'm talking about being in that, for me, being a creative. So for me, being a creative is like being in the studio until four in the morning or waking up after, you know, sleeping not as much as you wanted, but you're like, you're just in it. So you, that, that hustle is you grinding back to, for me, a beat machine or a turntable and going out and doing that. And then when that's done, okay, now it's on to the next thing. Okay, now we got to do this event. Okay, now I have a, to have a five-minute conversation with somebody at a nightclub at 3 a.m. And, and it's, it's being in that mindset for me of just go, go, go. And for me, I love that. I absolutely love that. And... You know, I could see how some people could take the word hustle, like, oh, hustle, you know, I'm playing pool. I'm going to hustle this dude in pool. Not like that at all. Um, so that's my terminology. Any way that you guys want to describe it, come up with it the way that you want to. I just, I love constantly being in my, in my world, really, my world of being creative and in my world of being out there and, and networking. Yeah. So one, I mean, one thing that I see you do very, very often is take risks mm. and, and, and not only do you take risks, but you take critis like constructive criticism and feedback better than most humans that I've interacted <laughs> with on earth. Do you think there's a correlation between your willingness to take risks and your ability to accept feedback? I could definitely see that. I mean, I've never really put that together um, just because I don't, sometimes I don't stop and think about that kind of thing. Um, sometimes I do, especially when I'm trying to find parking in Brooklyn at night. <laughs> uh, but with that, I mean, a lot of it is like being humble. It's, it's crazy. There was, um, there was a, like a kind of a legendary um, DJ um, I don't like to mention names, but um, when I when I first moved here, I just like met him briefly, and I I told him what I was about instantly, and he was like, yeah, no, nah, I I mess with that, like that's really cool, man. That's I respect you. Um, just remember to be humble, and stuff like that. Like I've I've seen it, I've I've experienced not being humble, you know, and, and bragging. And it really stuck with me. So like the, that goes along with like the constructive criticism is like if someone else that has experience wants to tell me something that I should, that I should know, or I, or I didn't know, or a way to do things differently, I definitely just need to take that and take my emotions out of it. Even if like, say someone is giving me criticism, criticism, cause this will happen sometimes too. And it feels like my blood is rising. But I just ignore that and I take it and I want to absorb that and see how, how it really plays and what I'm doing. And is it real or is it just someone trying to blow smoke? Um, and then with risks is like, it's, it goes along with the living life once. Like we only have this one life um, with like the odds of us being alive right now is crazy. The odds of uh, like you and me talking right now, it, the odds are crazy just because of how much stuff is going on in the world and what could happen at any point in time. So like time is a big thing too. Like I want to be able to just use this and I do use it as much as I can a smart way. So like if I, if I don't take that risk, I'm going to be thinking about that. And I don't want to, I don't want to live life with a regret. A uh, big thing before I moved out here and did it, all of this was, um, I saw people that wanted to do stuff like that and they either they had kids or they got a good job that was secure. That's another big thing. And uh, they didn't do it. And I, and I, and I see the toll that it took on them now. Well, that was you. 
That was me. I just want to point that out for the listener. Yeah. Like when uh, DJ Nefarious first moved to New York, he took a he took a job in a restaurant. I used to get countless calls from him. Oh my god, it was miserable. And then he and then after leaving the restaurant, he DJed a little, and then he took some, he took a scary job, which is you're financially insecure, you trust your ability, <laughs> but you don't really trust the universe which I have a lot of experience with. I had two jobs. I had two jobs. I had a sales cold, job. A cold calling a job. A cold calling job. Yeah. So going, going off of that, I want to I ask you this question. What, I mean, outside of me giving you a world of crap and asking you what you were waiting for. Facts. <laughs> um, what shifted within you and allowed you to just say, you know what? I'm going all in. And, and, Kind of this, yeah, I know you have the same, you have the same mindset that I do, which is like, I'm all in on, on what I'm doing, creating content and touching the world. And once that, you know, once that is not producing enough for me to survive, then it's time for me to recalculate my plan. What within you lit that fire, that spark where you just said, you know what, it's go time, like, uh, uh, and burn, and burn the bridge. I mean, you played a big role in that. Um, you did, and you know, even phone calls with my father, and just like looking at it, and people around me saying similar things that you did. Um, no one harped on me as much as you, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and then, like, also, it's like I feel blessed in the sense of I was I started seeing a lot of like hip hop dudes that are still doing it that are like really in it because going to all these events in new york city i'm just seeing like like real life i'm not seeing it over the internet anymore and um a big thing i had to do was just like realize that a lot of things aren't that big of a deal like okay cool i'm freaking out right now about whatever money about the next gig that's cool i'm freaking out right now that's all right it's happening. Cool. I have a little panic going on. Um, but I bet in a couple hours that won't be happening. Um, and like putting more faith into like what the process is and like also trusting that like the people that I've surrounded myself with recently are like really about it. And back home, it wasn't really like that. It was people that wanted to be about, it was like what I was doing. It was like, I wanted to do it, but I, I, I wasn't really about it. And I didn't have that mindset yet. Um, and another big thing was like, it's crazy. I would get, I would get DJ gigs randomly. Like people would hit me up where I'd find something or I'd have a little conversation. But in the, in the meantime, I felt like I was cheating the energy system because I was going out and emailing like 50 clubs in a night and I was doing all that. And yeah. I got a gig every once in a while. But I would do that and I was like, all right, I'm in my mind, I'm putting my energy out there. I'm putting like doing affirmations and all of this. And I wouldn't even necessarily get gigs like I like I said from that. But stuff would just start happening. So I started paying paying attention to little things like that. Like, okay, feeling good. When I would get a lot of money, I would just soak it in. This feels good. Stuff like that. So a lot of it was really a mindset. Um and just over time shifting. I don't think it was, I don't think it was overnight then. Yeah. We had a, uh, my guest last week, uh, Stephanie Stanton, we had a, we had a weird conversation I'm sure for a lot of people, which is we talked about abundance and, and a lot of the law of attraction stuff and how the energy that you put out into the universe is what comes back to you in, in yeah. physical form. And so it's been my experience kind of like what you just said, when I'm chasing the low hanging fruit, yeah, I get some low hanging fruit, but it doesn't really, it just doesn't really fill me up. And so it's funny that you say that because I got direction in my two way prayer uh, on Sunday actually was to um, stop doing easy asks for my podcast. And so today I sent out uh, a bunch of emails, Facebook messages, and just trying to blow up some people's mm. um, social media. So I do have a list that I stare at every single morning when I come in. Yeah. Guests that are going to come on my podcast. They don't know it yet. And I'm not going to name drop it. 
They're right. Not. Yeah. What's like, your experience been like with that when you just, cause I know you and I know that if you see, you know, you see somebody that you've idolized for a while or you really respect what they're doing, you're not scared to walk up to them. Do yeah. You, you think that your affirmations and, and kind of the mindset that you build in your, in your spiritual practice play a role in, in kind of your confidence and ability to walk up to somebody and, and generate a conversation? Oh, I mean, completely. When you were talking about your last, like last, the last interview that you just did and the names on the wall, I was like, Oh man, I got to piggyback at some point because I mentioned, I don't even know how much like I've touched on with this, even with you, just because it's like, all right, so late night parking in Brooklyn, like I'm, I'm the sober dude that drives around. And like at the end of the night, I drive back to Flatbush and I drive around my neighborhood sometimes for a while, sometimes it's not that bad. But it was like every night for like a month, maybe, maybe a month that I was listening to affirmation videos. So I would just put YouTube on, and now like even if I go on YouTube on my phone, all you all that comes up is affirmation talks and videos. A lot of Abraham Hicks um, seminars, stuff like that, and just like really immersing myself and trying to get into that. Because that's why I keep talking about the mind, mindset. Because that's what I kept hearing people that are really doing it talk about was mindset. So I was like, man, I really got to hone in on this. Um, and like kind of training myself to feel good. Um, and I'll tell you what you just talked about with like me being able to go up to these dudes. Sometimes it's like easy. And sometimes I feel like, why am I so nervous right now? Um, but it's because they're that dope. And like, I like that artist so much and I, I look up and I respect them. Um, one thing that's helped me, about that is like when I get nervous, I get I like my stomach just starts going crazy. But also when I'm excited, my stomach does the same thing. So what I started doing was when I was at events and my stomach would start racing, we'll do two things. I'd tell myself, okay, my stomach feels weird. That's the feeling in my body. And then two, I would go, oh, this is weird. This is the same experience I get when I'm really excited about doing something. And what am I doing right now? I'm doing exciting stuff. So I kind of try to convince myself, all right, cool. Let's just go ahead. Um, but really, that move is huge because especially with, with music, with a lot of entrepreneurship, um, it's really about building friendships. And like I almost hate using the word networking because it's like, for me, I get to be in a world where like I become friends with a lot of people and then then we like do music and we get money. So it's really about building these true relationships. So like, if I don't, if I don't go up to this dude, like, what am I doing? And also like, there's a certain respect. Like if there's a DJ that I've looked up to, like I got to salute him. Salute him might not be like this, but I'm definitely saluting him in a way. Yeah. It's funny that you say that. I mean, it's not funny. It's, it, I mean, it's not a coincidence, but, um, Pete said, you know, Pete from New Hampshire, I had him on here a couple of weeks yeah. ago. And he he stated that he's in the business of building relationships. And so networking, especially in Austin where I'm at and probably in New York as well, networking's like this huge word that just gets thrown around. And uh, I I mean I'm 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 as good at networking as I am, I believe, because I actually care about the individual. And that's one of the main reasons why, like when I do my podcast, I do it over a zoom call so that I can actually look at the person that I'm talking to. I like that. I love that. You know, it's not just a, I don't know. It's, I don't just want it to be some conversation because when I think of networking, I think about, I'm going to build connections to try to find out what I can get. Right. Versus the exactly. exactly. Versus the mindset of like, I'm going to build relationships and see what I can bring when I shifted my mindset to focusing on what I can bring to a relationship, it's, it, it's blown me away what comes back. Mm. Right. So when I focus my energy on what, you know, when I think about you and I say, what, what can I, what can I give him? Mm. Right. So I've literally, you know, I wanted to contribute to, to your hustle 
for a while and I'll listen to every beat you drop, which sometimes is a lot. And then when I heard, and I see it, when I heard the beat for the intro, the, for the podcast, I, I mean, it was like, it probably said a few seconds ago, right? Like you'd posted it and yeah. I hit it and said, that's sold. Give it to me. You know, yeah. and then you said, oh, I can't, I don't. I, don't. And I think you texted me too. Yeah. yeah. So, and you said like, I, I can't, or I don't feel right charging you what I charge. And it's like, why dude, you've hustled to get to the point where you're at right now. Mm-hmm. And the reality of it is, is if you give me something, I'm not going to appreciate it as much as if I pay top dollar for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause you just gave me something. So you sent oh, me a yeah. beat a while ago that you were just going to throw me for my podcast. And it never got used. It's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Ooh, free it's, beat, bruh. Yeah. It's a sick beat. But I mean, when I heard this one and I was like, dude, 300, no problem. I don't know if that's what you charge, you know, people that put them on an album or not, but I was like, no problem. That, that thing is fire. And I've had so many compliments on that. Mm. that beat. And that brings me to my next question that I want to ask you. When you're sitting down, because I've watched you in New York, man. I've seen, and I don't know if people are paying respects or not, but as an artist myself, I mean, I'm a poet. I draw, um, you know, mm. obviously I wrote my memoir, which is back here. Um, I can get that on Amazon. What's up? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or hit me up. I have 500 of them. I'm ready to ship out. Um, But when I think about it and I think about when I sit down to create, you know, when I sit down to create a YouTube video or I'm creating a course or I'm working, you know, I'm doing coaching with a client or I'm getting ready for an interview. When I was gearing up for this interview, the question that kept coming to me to ask you was what do you, what do you put into your creation? Like, is there a practice that you have um, to create a beat? Are you trying to visualize something or are you just sitting down at, you know, and mix and just playing with sounds and looking, looking, you know, looking for samples to lay down a track? It's like, it's so many different ways. And I, tr- my biggest thing is I try not to like force a creative process where I'm like, oh, man. like how I was talking about the, like feeling good, practicing that, I try not to do that as much about beats. Like if I'm stressed, I might get quiet for a little while, maybe meditate. But like my best stuff comes out when like it's done and I can barely remember what I just did. So a lot of it is like a very, making music is a very spiritual, like it's weird. I say sexual just because like, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's all, it encompasses everything on a mental level and like a spiritual level sometimes when I'm really in that zone. Um, But no, like my biggest thing is going through the samples and going through the samples and and doing that and kind of doing like the little tedious tasks. And then I find one, but like, I might be, I'm picky about it too. I want one that I get a feeling with because I want to be able to set a certain mood. And, like, people will ask me, like, wow, your beats, like, the names of them are really weird. But if you ask me about the name of it, I'll tell you the whole concept of the song, and you'll probably get inspired to write about that because that's exactly the whole vision that I had it and where it came from, from just maybe, like, two, three words, maybe one word, who knows. Um, But a lot of it is, like, really seeing that vision when it's happening. Yeah, let me... Uh, Cause I, I mean, I love hip hop. I am, I mean, you know me, like I, I hate rap. I mean, I hate rap music. I love hip hop. Like these artists that are out going, hey, nah, 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 nah. like I don't, party, what's up? Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like, but when I hear, when I hear a, a legit beat in somebody writing some, some lyrics, you know what I mean? That are like, you know what I mean? Like I, I love hip hop and so my question to you is how many clowns or how many people, not clowns, but how many people do you have that approach you that don't respect what you do? Meaning they're trying to get a free beat or they're trying to get free time or. It's, it's bad. And like, so as crazy as like what I deal with, with it. And then I can only imagine like what dudes that are like, uh, like I'm here and they're up here. But, like, 
dudes that just hit you up. Yo, bro, you shoes fire. Let's collab or something. Bro, I've never met you in my life. Like, that's how you're going to introduce yourself to me. Or, like, people will send me a Spotify or an iTunes link. And they're like, they might not even, sometimes they don't even say anything. They just send the link and that's it. Um, or people were like, yo, do you have any free beats? I mean, I, there was there was a dude recently, um, we did a show together and he kind of tried to build a relationship a little bit. He got my number, that was it. And then he was like, oh, how much for the beat? And I told him and he was like, oh, and these dudes get so scared, like they just stop right there, some of them. And I was like, yo, what's up? Like, you obviously approached me. Is it the money? And he was like, yeah, well, you don't lease, which leasing is like this new age bullshit where people rent beats out. So, like, say um, Joe Schmo over here wanted a beat from me. I could sell him and 500, 500 other rappers the same beat. Um, so there's no really original sound with it, nothing like that. And dudes come up to you about that all the time. They want a lease is like 30 to 50 bucks. And it's just, it's, it's just crazy. So yeah, I deal with it a lot. I get producers trying to sell me beats on, on, um, on emails all the time. So, I mean, when I, when I hear that, I think, you know, I think about my own, my own perspective and my own kind of path in entrepreneurship and in life in general. Right. It didn't really have anything to do with entrepreneurship per se. But when I think about it and I think about how many people and how long I spent my life not knowing my worth. Mm. Right. So I think when I hear you say that, I just think about how these people, it's not that they're disrespecting your craft. It's that they don't know, they don't know their actual worth. They don't know they're not, theirs. They're not tapped into what they're worth and what they can produce because in the, with the, you know, you know me, dude, I'm high on this abundance mindset thing. And like, yes. when I think about it, like wealth can be generated in any given moment in this yes. conversation, wealth can be generated. When right. I think about that, I get amped up and my value goes up. Yeah. Right. So I have no problem paying somebody top dollar for something because I know, you know what I mean? I make money mm -hmm. because I contribute to the world. The more that I contribute to the world, the more that I'm focused on contributing, the more that I get back. How do you, do you have experience being in a scarcity mindset, being where these rappers are asking you to lease them beats for 30 bucks? Do you have experience being there and what was it like? Like being on the, yeah, let's do it side or on the, or the their side. Yeah. I mean, just Not like everywhere, honestly. So go ahead. No, I was just going to say like being in that scarcity mindset where it's like, oh yeah, I'll lease you the beat. Cause you don't think, you know, you kind of undersell your value. Mm -hmm. Because you're scared that it's not going to come. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, and I'm sure you do too. Um, so there was a there was a point where I was like, man, like I want to try to figure out a way where I can be in this 2000 at the time it was 2017 or 16. I was like, I want to be like in this new age producer life, but like making real good hip hop. Like I don't want to make this trap bullshit. And like I made some trap beats just for fun and like to kind of prove to myself that I could do it. And then, um, but I was like, oh man, I gotta get email addresses. I like started stealing people's email addresses and like, like learning hacks and like trying to learn about social media and get, and like, it's like get into that state instead of like the trust and then relying on the process state. I was in the like, I'm in an office all day state. Let's get like this going on and being like, all right, well, I kind of have to do this because that's the only way I'm going to get my music out there. So I'm selling dudes beats for 50, 75 bucks because I'm like, I had convinced myself in a scared thought that, yeah, well, I should be doing this because that's a way that I can get myself out there. You know what I mean? I thought that was the only way to do it. And like, that's what this should, it should be happening that way. And like, I remember so many times where I would, wouldn't like want to say something or would want to send a text. And I'd look at that for so long and I, and I'd have it like in a, 
I like be typing it and deleting it, typing it and deleting it, and it'd be a price and, and then a different price and a price and then a different price. And then I'd send it and I'd instantly regret it, Mark. Like I would send them a text with one price and I'd be like, man, I shouldn't be doing this. But like I have to. Because I was in that mindset of I have to from being scared. It was in that point. So that's really where I was at. And um, it's crazy. It's, it's like, it's not a fun place for sure. And, you know, where I'm at now, I'm going to be, I'm here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. And I'm like working these stages. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, yeah, I, I've watched you. So I know, uh, I know what you're doing. And I know that, you know, I, I know you've been a huge influence on my life and my, my kind of grind. And, you know, I have people ask me all the time, like, how have you gotten to where you are right now? And it's like, I work, you know, what are you doing? Like every single day I have a task list, you know, I swap, you know, we swap task lists. Yeah, wow. Mine are really weird times, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, every single day I have various tasks that I'm going to get done. And, you know, I've started a podcast and a YouTube channel and written a book and, you know, you always have, like, I look at your task list and you have some cool stuff on there. Like you always have like something new that you're working on. That's what I, I mean, obviously your grind is so hardcore. Like you really do this and you have what I like is you have a good regimen, but like you're always up to something new. Like you're always on to the next thing. It's, it's really awesome to see that. Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why, why not? not? I mean, yeah. nobody else is up to the, to that thing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. why, you know, why not me? It's like yeah. when I thought about, you know, when I thought about starting the podcast, it was like, well, there's, why not? there's so, well, no, it wasn't. I mean, that's not my first thought, but the, it's like, there's so many podcasts out there. Yeah. There's so many podcasters. I'm never going to get a following, you know, like when I go, I'm just going to look at the first one on my list. When I ask Hal, Hal Elrod to come on my podcast, he's going to say no. Or he's not going to respond. I'm not going to be able to find his email. And then my business mentor said to me, he's like, Mark, start the podcast. You'll figure everything else out. Mm -hmm. And so I reached out to somebody who I'm interviewing tomorrow who has had a podcast for a while and has like a lot more. He's a lot further down the path than I am. And he was like, right. oh, yeah, I'll come on. So it's like now that I have a podcast and I have an outlet to contribute to other people's lives, like the abundance, it just comes back. Yeah. So I want to ask you this final question. If you could leave one thing with the world, what would it be? So if I could leave, because I take that in a lot of different ways. Like if I could leave the world with anything is like, I want to be able to leave a legacy of making a difference, especially with young kids um, that are on their way to a path of addiction or they're already there um, and let them know that there's like a different way of living. Um, it's something that I really care about from being someone that got sober when I was younger is I want to be able to leave the world and people know that's, that I was able to make a difference and change some, change some lives. I, I refuse to, to leave the world, and that's it. That's, I, I refuse for that to happen. There needs to, there's going to be a, a change, and who knows what that will be, but uh, it will definitely be very positive. That's probably the best. I mean, I'm, I'm still a rookie at this podcast thing, but that's the best answer that I've, that I've gotten yet. And in my, my opinion, um, I'm I'm also, tried, so I hope so. <laughs> I'm also, also on a quest to leave a legacy here on earth. I can't imagine what it's, what it would be like if, if, you know, on my deathbed, I were to contemplate why I didn't do something. So yeah. I'm all in on this life because you only get one and I'm real clear on that. Yeah. So Jonas, DJ Nefarious, for those people who have hollered at me already about where they can find more beats like my intro and outro for this podcast, where can they find your work? So I think the best thing to do is to get, um, get in touch with me, DJ Nefarious on Instagram. Um, and then I have my website, www.djnefarious. Um, and if you don't know how to spell that, Nefarious is N-E-F. 
A R I O U S. Um, but you know that that Graham's where it's at. So hit me up there, and we'll go from there. The Graham is where it's at. It's the Instagram. Yeah. is my work. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you call, you call how cheesy that was. Well, I don't. I mean, I just. I, I know it's. I know it's super beneficial for people, but I don't understand why. I mean, I get the hustle of people following. No, you know what's crazy right. is like in New York when I moved here because I'm like New Ham- living in New Hampshire. I was like, okay, cool. Snapchat's kind of popping. Like Facebook is dope. But then I moved to New York, and like you don't even need a phone number. Like IG and Insta- Instagram is everything. Instagram is your portfolio of your business how people find you and how people DM to get in touch with you on there. It's, it's uh, pretty wild. Awesome. So Instagram, remember that. <laughs> right. DJ Neferis, I thank you for coming on, man. Right. Thank you so much, man. I look forward to having you on in the future. That concludes this episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in from the depths of my heart. I also want to invite you to head over to my website, markcrandall.net, to see what else I'm up to and to follow me on social. I look forward to meeting you guys on the next episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast and want to leave you with this. Failure is a word reserved by those that quit. You are only limited by what's between your ears. Guys, don't give up. Keep striving harder and kick the door in on mediocrity and live the life of your dreams. Until next time. That concludes this episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in from the depths of my heart. I also want to invite you to head over to my website, markcrandall.net, to see what else I'm up to and to follow me on social. I look forward to meeting you guys on the next episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast and want to leave you with this. Failure is a word reserved by those that quit. You are only limited by what's between your ears. Guys, don't give up. Keep striving harder and kick the door in on mediocrity and live the life of your dreams. Until next time.